We're back at the Masters Clash Finals, everybody. The offline final in Paris. And we are heading into our second semifinal in the winner bracket. A best of three match. This is the last best of three of the entire tournament. After that, we're going to switch into the best of five mode. Now, again, as already explained a couple of times, but for the people that haven't really caught all of this, I'm going to explain it again. I'm not in France. I'm not in Paris. Reason is pretty simple. The offline event is going to focus on the French production. The French stream is their top priority. It didn't make any any sense whatsoever for me to go to Paris for the event that would be in some weird side room and not have the same production tools that I have here to give you a good coverage of all of this. So that's that. Unfortunately, we currently don't have a clean feed of the footage that is happening at the venue, so I can't include it into the commentary. Maybe for tomorrow we're going to get something like that. Initially, it was kind of promised, so maybe tomorrow. If we do, I'll include it. For now, we just go for the game footage as it stands. But we have a pretty interesting one on our hands because the hardest going up against the Donuts right now is pretty... Uh, I mean, this is an exciting match. There's a couple of things that we also have to talk about when it comes to the players real quickly. Now, first of all, um, Ixia is playing on the account Raisin. Apparently, there were some problems with him logging into his main account. Probably just like the, hey, you're logging in from a different location and then the account gets locked or whatever. So he's playing on uh, the Raisin account. We have Rutsu on the account Bang. I'm going to go over that later again. So there's a couple of Smurf accounts involved. Nick, for example, is a playing on his account Hans. That should be widely known at this point. With that being said, Svam Grotta is currently play, say, uh, playing for the blue team. He's replacing Copenhagen. Copenhagen, right at the beginning when the finals were announced, he said, hey guys, I can't play. Uh, because he has some military service thingy going, so uh, Svam Grotta is the one that replaces him. The team has actually been reaching out to the community, been asking like, hey, who's interested? And they ended up uh, playing with Svam Grotta. There's also another bad news for the Hardos. Now, all of these players are at the venue. There's one exception, and that is Chris. So Chris couldn't make it to Paris. I'm at this point not 100% certain if he got tested positive for Corona. I don't really think so. Or if there was some other technicality that prevented him from going there. But but as far as I know, he had something to do with the COVID restrictions. Um, still a little bit unsure what exactly was the case there. Fact of the matter is, he's not at the venue. So Chris is not there, but obviously all of these players are connected, even though they're playing at the same area, over Discord voice anyways, and therefore it doesn't really make the biggest difference. But again, it's a bit of a setback, obviously. So the players already had a lot of fun over the last couple of days, meeting in restaurants. I've been talking about this in the previous game, but now with all of that all out of the way, let's focus a bit on... Uh, What's actually going on here? We have Cursed Hollow as our first map, so already awesome. Love the map. We get Zeratul as a quick pick for Rutsu. I like that too. And Imperius is back. I mean, we're seeing a lot more Imperius right now, which is kind of awesome as well. Bans on uh, Tracer. We got the Birdie also banned. I mean, false set with the control over the bosses, his mobility, just soaking globally. Always cool to have on a big map. And in Cursed Hollow, he gets even more value, so I like that. Junkrat for zone control, very, very good. So any boss fight that you have with Junkrat can be a huge problem. And there are so many small choke points where a well-placed mine can ruin the other team's day. That in this case, the Hardos decide that they are going to ban him out here. But also looking a little bit to see what Laura is going to play here. It's kind of funny to see all of this come together at this point. Especially with the players, of course, being super happy that they finally have like an offline event again. It's more so about, you know, just meeting each other, shooting the shit a little bit with friends, uh, having a beer, and just like... The first thing they did is met up at a restaurant and just went, I think, to a Korean uh, barbecue and had some fun there. So it's kind of cool. I mean, obviously all a little bit small scale because of Corona still, but yeah, pretty awesome. Uther gets banned. So that's the third support that gets banned out in the setup now. We got a new Burak in for the train conductor. So bad Benny locks him in. And there is Yazu with Karazi. It's a good stuff. And that leaves us with Chris for the red team as the blue team is about to round out their draft. Going for the Lauber and Skok pick here. And we're going to see what's going to happen there. But yeah. Good stuff. I'm already excited. With with Zeratul in, Zeratul is always amazing for me when uh, we see him in any kind of game. But here even more so. I mean, there's of course the pressure of playing an offline event. I can be Lauba with Muradin, the Candy King, and we got Skork on uh, Hanzo. Oh no! Yeah, and Chris, last but not least, they have Imperius, they have a new Burak, so they have some CC that they can already put in. Karazim could then, after isolation... Oh! Woohoohoohoo! Baby! Viking time! I like it. We get the Vikings and now I'm a happy panda. And it's Hazu himself that plays them. Yes! 
Yes, just yes. All around, just yes. I'm ready. I hope you're too. Let's go. Cursed Hollow, game number one. The Vikings, they went for it, guys. We have the Vikings in the game. The Donuts going up against the Hardos, and it is going to be awesome. Now, the first thing that happens is that Bad Benny pauses the game. In this case, it's actually that there are apparently some voice issues that they currently have. I think we already encountered something like this in the first game. I expect that it's going to be solved very quickly, but the issue here is that something with voice doesn't quite work, so maybe an admin has to take a look at it. It could also be that they just resolve it in a second either way. But with all of that said and done, let's introduce our players first and also talk about those Smurf accounts again. Zeratul is being played by Ruzzo. So Ruzzo is playing on one of his Smurf accounts. He's playing on the account Bang, so keep that in mind. Lauber on Meridian. We got Skog on Hanzo. Swamp Grotta replacing Copenhagen for the reasons I mentioned earlier. He's playing Blaze. And we have Raisin aka Ixia playing Anna. Now he wanted to play on his main account but for some reason there were login issues, there were problems with the account so instead they decided to give him a different account that he can play and uh, that's what we're seeing here so the support player is also on the smurf. We got Bad Benny on Anubarak for the hardos. Hazorps is playing the Vikings and that alone is already just like throwing nostalgia chills down my back. Chris on Imperius, the one player that didn't make it to France. We have Hans aka Nick on Cassia and Yazu is playing Karazim. So yeah, the stage is set for the first game and of course with the Vikings taken, this is gonna be a lot of fun. It's one of the old school ones also where they played Vikings in the past. Uh, Ixia has to make sure that he's gonna keep the boys and girls alive as the first attack against Svamgorada was already set up. Didn't lead to anything, but well, here we go. Oh, and there it is! The attempted kill against the... Oh, and it goes down! Nice! First blood! I was expecting this to just slowly shape up, you know, it's not taking it like too crazy, but yeah, they are going hard on this one. Nicely done. Easy kill, and Nick goes down. Yeah, wrong account, Nick. I mean, he's literally on his feeding account, so it doesn't really work the way that they hoped for initially. But okay. When we're looking at Zeratul, we have the Shadow Hunter on level 1. We expect, of course, Might of the Nerezim to be picked up on level 10. I pretty much mention it because we had one Zeratul play already during uh, the previous semi final in the winner bracket. And there we had a bit of a deviation in the build with Zeratul roaming between lanes. He went for. Oh, nice dodge. With Zeratul roaming on uh, Towers of Doom, he went for a cleave build and went also into the Void Prison. In the end, it didn't quite work out for Chili Mountain. But of course, this is going to be a bit of a different style. There's a lot of prize money on the line here. It's the top four teams that made it to the offline final. I think 11,000 euros in total, plus uh, change, a little bit of pizza money, is on the line for this one. Double elimination system. This is the last best of three. After this, we're heading into best of fives for the winner bracket final and also the loser bracket matches. And already pressure in the mid lane, but Zeratul is rotating in. Rotsu wants to help out with the kill. Chris. He's communicating with the team, obviously, over Discord, over voice, which caused also a bit of an issue earlier. And with all of that, we're gonna start moving straight for damage on the structures in the mid lane, thanks to the Hardos exploiting that little time window that they had. And if you play with Vikings, the whole idea is, of course, that you are just running a strong foreman that can capitalize on the Vikings soaking uh, the other lanes. So you're setting that foreman up to soak as much as you can, and, uh, sorry, the foreman out to make as, do as much damage as you can while the Vikings are occupying some of your opponents. In this case, Chris is helping out topside too because they're going for the Siege Giants, timing this of course perfectly around the first tribute in the game that just got announced at 2 minutes and 30 seconds. And the Siege Giants are now going to move down to the bottom of the map, so on the opposite side of the objective, which is putting Rutsu in a bit of a weird spot now because he has to decide whether he wants to deal with the Siege Giants or if he wants to help the team out. The Vikings are of course pushing this even further. And Zeratul is moving away. So there's potential for the bot lane to suffer some serious damage. Especially if the top can be delayed. Level 4 talents are in and that leads us to Lauba going into Thunderburn as a level 4 talent. So we're going to see an old school Muradin survive build. And Zeratul moved back down in order to deal with this situation. Would have been really surprised if he abandoned that completely. But at the top the fight continues. Bit of extra damage as Yasu is diving in with Karazim. And Hazu is trying to go for the channel. Yeah, there's an interrupt attempt by Lauba. Successful, but Benny's a little bit low, but so is Lauba himself. And he barely is jumping out there. 
That was a close call. But they turn the attention to Swam Karata. And the damage is there. The CC is chained. He turns it around. And they're going for Chris. Yasuo also has to dash out. And everybody's still low in HP. But of course, this is only a four-man that is happening at the top. The Vikings are still pushing these lanes and soaking the experience. But it's not really a big threat for the blue team right now. Level 7 talents are in. The Skullcracker is ready. We have a carapace focus for Bad Benny, and everybody went straight to the fountain and start tapping. With us now looking at the surge of light, we got the holy fervor here for Imperius. As our man is already moving in, Chris with a connect! They go for Lauber again, and he barely makes it out. Couldn't connect an additional stun. Zeratul has also started to roam around just a bit. Might want to help the team out here. But that means, of course, that he has to ban in the bot lane, for example. Where Hazo is already pushing. The fight at the top, on the other hand, is getting spicy. And Nick dies again. Nick down for the second time. Two kills against Cassia. The Stormbolt connects. And that's another kill. This time it's Imperius that gets murdered. Well done. Bit of an interrupt attempt here. But yeah, very, very nice skills from them. So first Cassia goes down and then as you can see here, they follow it up with another good stun chain against Imperius. Chris doesn't really stand a chance there. And that leads to Swam Grotta going straight for the channel on the tribute. Ends up in the hands of the blue team eventually. So they take the lead for now. Three kills to zero in total. So nice for the donuts. Good start for them. Lauba on the other hand gets caught in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and B stabs the shit out of them afterwards. Okay. That yeah, was a bit close. I mean, Lauber is already happy that he didn't die first in the game. But that must, of course, feel pretty decent that he got away there. Nicely done. And Bad Benny is trying to steal some vision. 25 stacks also for Cassia. So Nick inting for stacks, pretty much. We have also 12 for uh, Zaratul, so he's soon going to be done with his quest on the level 1 talent. Has moved straight into the wormhole on level 7. Tons of mobility for him coming up here. Level 10 ability is also about to be ready. Vikings, they're excelling usually a bit more in the mid game when they can start to take more control here. Might of the Nerezim as we expected. Ana went straight into the Eye of Horus over here. And even outside of that, no big surprises. Now the next tribute is up. And that means it's going to be another big fight right here. There's already the jump right there. They're starting to make their move for it. Nicely done. And it's time to party. Vikings are down. Quest is completed. Zeratul can roam. Gets the experience at the bot lane. Helps the team. Big arrow. Big arrow. Big connect. And big kills. Nice. One down, Bad Benny gets attacked, he's gonna fall. Yeah, it's Karazim that zips away, but Rutsu hasn't given up on it yet. Oh, and he gets the kill too. Rutsu with a kill, but boys, the arrow was the big play. And of course, here now, the next one. But check this one out. I mean, here's the fight, and now the arrow comes in. Arrow's on the way, bam! Triple hit right there, beautiful. The follow-up is instantaneous. They get the kill against Cassia, and then they follow up with several others. But that move for boss, is that going to come back to bite them? I don't think so, no. Red team isn't ready yet. It's seven kills to zero at this point. They take the boss, and the momentum that we're seeing is fairly impressive. I mean, whoo! We got seven kills to zero, an entire level lead, a boss now attacking the top lane, another tribute spawning, and keep in mind that the Donuts have two out of three tributes. So they get another one. They have the first curse. So that is getting scary, especially since another boss is now getting attacked too, and the red team is so far not making any moves here. But with them slowly rotating towards the tribute, the blue team realizes it takes them too much time to go for this. So they abandon the idea quickly. And yeah, it's tribute time. You have to fight for this, but there's a level 13 talent. Level 13 is in, and we got the Bronze Beard Rage after level 4 talent, so not really the synergy we usually see. Another triple! Another kill! And they try to go for the double. Great setup again. Karazim is down, but these quick kills against Cassia are just unbelievable. Too good. There's the curse, and of course we're going to take another look at that arrow and follow up. Yeah, here it comes. The arrow connects with another three. Insta blow up against Cassia. Nick is just getting murdered in this game. And then they got another kill shortly after. That's ten kills to zero. And it is a slaughter that we're watching here. 
I mean, damn. Real big problem for the Hardos. The Donuts, they are snacking them up alive here. Yeah, 15,000 damage for Imperius as the top damage dealer for the red team. On the other side, we have 24,000 for Hanzo, who just took another fort down at the bottom. And that's two forts already destroyed. They're not going for the boss here. They're trying to get a little bit more damage in in the middle, maybe. Moving for the last remaining outer line of defense as they are attacking the four. 10 kills to zero. There it is. And, yep, things are looking pretty Gucci here. Another quick attack, and that's the fort. It's a two-level lead, guys. A two-level lead. That's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. And it's scary. It's really scary, especially since the Donuts haven't lost a single hero yet. Take a big look of what we're looking at in terms of uh, experience. 7,000 additional experience in heroes against zero. Minion XP, that's a little bit better for the Hardos. They've been soaking. Again, they have the Vikings, so that's what you would expect. Passive experience is, of course, now kicking in for the blue team too, since they destroyed three forts already. Structural damage is there, obviously, as well. But it is becoming a very difficult game for the Hardos. They honestly have to hope for a mistake to be made by the Donuts. And the Donuts are playing this now very, very slow. And they should. They're close up to level 16. You want to wait for the extra talent before you make your move. And just sniffing everything out. With Muradin, who already completed his level, uh, his baseline uh, quest, is doing his thing now too. Moves in again, seven-sided, Lauber, and he survives again. Ixir on Anna with a big save on Lauber, helping him out at, as the dwarf face-checked the bush and nearly got punished for it with Karazim around in the seven-sided. That could have been a problem. Yeah, the arrow connected, but this time the follow-up isn't there. Muradin also cocooned, so that disrupted the play that they wanted to go for a little bit. And another setup. No, Chris! And he's dead. Chris is dead. The 16 talents, a big double stun from Muradin. And Nick dies too. Nick is getting farmed. I mean, honestly, at this point, Nick is just pretty much an oversized minion in this game. He's just another experience source for the Donuts. Five kills against Nick. He died five times already. That is just absolutely insane. And the setup that we are seeing with all of these stuns for the Donuts is in, uh, I mean, it's incredible. They're making a massive statement here. Keep in mind, this is a best of three series. And at this point, the Donuts are kicking the ass of the Hardo so hard that the red team might have to play the next match standing. It's incredible. There are so many burns coming around here that I think we are in for a bit of a break between uh, the games because the Hardos will have to apply a bunch of Aloe Vera here. This is... Whew, you gotta soothe those burns somehow. I mean, holy shit. 13 kills to zero. Are you kidding me? We're 12 minutes into the game and look at the stacks for Cassia. Yeah. When you're dead, you can stack. He died five times. 34. That's nothing. That's absolutely insane. I'm really scared. I mean, comebacks are always possible, don't get me wrong, but at this point, it's just such a stretch that the Donuts are losing this one. There needs to be a big win. Now, with level 16 talents in the hands of the Hardos, that's the moment. That's the moment. Maybe now you can make your play. Take a good fight, and then just go for it, you know? But the boss has been taken at the bottom of the map. They're already setting up here. One tribute wouldn't really be a problem. This is really one of those moments where you need to make sure that you are getting a good fight in. There's a two-level disadvantage, so the stats are still an issue for the Hardos. But at the same time, this is the only play you have. Try and push it past the boss, go for the battle, take multiple heroes down. That helps you to close the gap a little bit. But if they now lose more here, then that's a problem. And of course, with Vikings, it's not really the playstyle that you're looking for. But it's the only thing that they can do at the end of the day. Because time is working in favor of the Donuts. And the Donuts are pushing. They want the keep. And if they can't take it directly, they at least want to drop it as low as they possibly can. So here we go again. Keep is gone. And that's such a big win. They try to go for Bad Benny. Chris! But the bunker is there as Imperius tries to engage. The arrow, Cassia is dead. Zeratul gets punished. First kill. First kill. Yasu takes one down, but it's still not enough. Bad Benny dies. Imperius is dead. Karazim is the only one that is still on the map. Two keeps are down now. The one in the middle, the one at the bottom. 
uh, half a level to 20. The Vikings get farmed too. Hazel doesn't stand a chance. The core is soon going to take some damage. They're likely going to end it all here. 14 seconds for Cassie to come down. Un-fucking-leavable. What the hell? Staggered death against Yasu most likely. The core at 80%. Lauber just eats it. And they let him go. 100 hit points. They don't care. Win the game. And what a stomp in game number one. The donuts with a big statement in the first game of the best of three series at the finals. GG. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Game number two coming up. Battlefield of Eternity is the map and I'm a bit shocked. I definitely am. Game number one was an absolute beatdown that I did not expect. A single kill. The Hardos got a single kill. One. Just one. It's all they got. And it's incredible to me. I expected a pretty intense series between the two teams. I did not expect the ass kicking that the Donuts just gave the Hardos. Now, it was a Vikings draft. Those are oftentimes a little bit of a do or die setup. Either you have a really cool setup and it works in your favor and you take control of the game and then take it, or you en <clears throat> end up in a situation where it backfires a little bit and the game turns against you, which is most of what we just saw. Basically, there is a good chance that this is flipping now. Or that at least we're going to see a much closer game, number two, considering that this is Battlefield of Eternity than what happened on the previous one. But, whew. As far as statements on map 1 goes, that's about as good as it gets for the Donuts. Vala gets banned, and we also have a ban on Blaze. No range poke from uh, Chromie either. And... Uh, Color me intrigued. I want to see what exactly we're getting now. First of all, what's the immortal damage going to be like? Which heroes are we going to see for that? Maybe anything that's a little bit more outside of the box. First of all, we're getting... Uh, Cassia in. Looks like Hazo might play that. Ah! And the oldie but goldie! Rutsu and Lauba with Zarya and Garrosh. The speed bubble on level 4 for Zarya empowers Garrosh because he can run into the opponent's team and can just simply throw any target back into uh, the bunch. And this is a strategy that initially was back then played on the European side by Lauba's fan club, so exactly by the boys that you're seeing here now on the blue team side. And that is insanely dangerous because you have to be so careful that Garrosh just doesn't absolutely wreck you here. And Ruzzo is also, he has a couple of heroes that he's really good at and one of them is Zarya. So they love to play this shit on Battlefield of Eternity, they've done it multiple times in the past and they are incredibly dangerous with it. Urel gets played by Chris and Anduin too, so immediately two, two picks that counteracted a bit. Anduin can pull the target out after the flip which is highly important and will oftentimes save lives. And Urel, of course, can jump in or out if she's the one that gets thrown. But she can jump in after the target and start her own displacement to just try and break any combo attempt. But this is already a very, very aggressive opening in the draft. And, I mean, an immediate one from the Donuts. Stukov with the follow-up coming in here for Ixia. Again, playing the account Raisin because there were some login problems. Roots was playing the account Bang. And there is Hanzo. Uh, I don't mind that either. After the arrows that we've seen in the previous game, whew. Yeah, we're gonna get that once more. So, yeah, right now things are working out for them. Again, Copenhagen isn't here, can't play with them, so it's Vamkorota that they have at the event in Paris. And it is up to the Hardos to really turn this. Hardos with a double pick. Rounding out the draft with Muradin for by Benny, okay, and Genji. Genji for Nick. Unless, of course, they're swapping things around a bit again, but here we go. That's the setup that they have, a lot of mobility. I mean, everybody, this is actually kind of smart. I mean, everybody that can, most of the champs that can, uh, that get thrown in by Garrosh can escape, or at least try to. If that's enough, together with Anduin, who can save Cassia, we'll find out. First of all, let, let's see Let's see what Swamgoda is going to pick. The Panda! We're going to get Chen, everybody! Battlefield of Eternity! Map number two, the Donuts against the Hardos. So far, it has not been going well for the Hardos. So let's see if they can bring it back to game number three. Or if they're going to end up in the loser bracket after this series. Because the Donuts, they are on a roll. Let's go. 
Game number two, the Donuts with the lead in the best of three series in the attempt to close it out with a 2-0, not give the Hardos a chance to bring the series back in advance to the winner bracket final right away. On the left side, we have the blue team with Rutsu on the account Bang playing Zarya. We got Raisin, aka Ixia, on Stukov. Skog is playing Hanzo, Lauber on Garrosh, Swam Grotta replacing Copenhagen. Who had a military service appointment thingy, whatever, is playing Chen. And on the right side of the map, the Hardos with Yazu and Anduin, Chris on Ural. Bet Benny is playing Muradin, Hazo on Cassia. And we have Nick on his account, Hans, playing Genji. Okay. I mean, it's clear what they gotta do. Win this one, big time, if possible. There's a lot more immortal damage on the side of the donuts, but it's really going to be this Zarya and Garrosh combo that we have to have a look at. Level 4 is the important talent. That's where the combo really kicks in, because then uh, the speed bubble is allowing Garrosh to close the distance between themselves and any target that he wants to go for very, very quickly. And of course, the mobility on the other side is there. So there are counterplay approaches. But mobility is not only to allow Garrosh to rush in, you know, you can always uh, allow someone to get away whenever there's an engage. You put it on Stukov and he can just like rush out a bit. So we'll see how they are playing this. But up at the top we now have a 2 versus 1 as Chen gets attacked by Genji and by Urel. Which puts the bot lane under pressure too and so far it is the Donuts that are getting much more out of this little trade than uh, the Hardos. Up at the top side, Chen is interrupting them even further. One tower still stands, so does the gate. And down here, the fountain and the entire wall has now fallen. So this split attempt by the Hardos going for a 2-3 just doesn't work for them. Absolutely not. They lost the fountain that is their sustain gone at the bottom of the map. Level 4 abilities aren't there yet. They're trying to turn in against Stukov. The slap and oh... <laughs> That's the kill! Skog is not fucking around, is he? Yeah, the Shimada brothers are going up against each other, but Skog is just murdering. His arrows on the last game were insane! And in this case, we just got Anduin popped. The Nick Carter of the Nexus bites the dust and is gone. And the rest of the Backstreet Boys is already on the run too. Now we have our play at the bot lane. And guys, I don't know what to tell you, but we're two minutes in and the Donuts are currently taking the first fort down. The fuck's happening here? <laughs> I mean, what's going on? <laughs> to be fair, after the Hardos had an absolutely insane run in the Masters Clash regular season and were undefeated, not only in matches but also in maps, it was the Donuts who did not only take the first map of the Hardos but also won the first series. So it honestly seems even more so now that the Donuts are the kryptonite of the Hardos. But this is an extent that we just haven't seen yet. And it is terrifying to look at this. We have level 4 abilities now that gives us the speed barrier, as mentioned. So now the entire setup around Garrosh is even more dangerous. He took the camps. Yeah, that's a counterplay attempt, but also that doesn't work out. Lauber is easily walking away from this. And that's a slightly leading experience, but the Hardos, they gotta dig deep now. This is one of those perfect examples where you just sit there and you gotta say, alright guys, Let's let's relax for a second, locker durch die Hose atmen, chill, and then go for it. And that's what they're gonna try and do. So, one kill to zero, game isn't over yet by any means. We're still here, still everything fine. The Hardos are bringing it back. One kill to zero. But the lead on the Immortal for the blue team. And they're trying to get even more. Nick is the only one who's trying to chunk it down here, but I don't think that he has a chance. There's just too much poke happening right now. We have Saria. We have Hanzo, and they're chunking it down quickly. And this is another problem. Look at the bot lane for just a second. So there's even more damage being done to the wall at the bottom already. And there's the objective with 40% roughly on the shield. They finally deal with the bot lane situation too, but one of the towers is already on 50% HP and the gate has taken some damage as well. Normally, you wouldn't really talk about this all this much, but you have to understand we are four minutes into the game. They're taking the wall on the keep down. If they drop the second fort now with this push topside, that would be an absolute disaster. And Urel is currently not here. Urel is pushing the bot lane out a little bit. So they are in a 4 versus 5. And level 7 is kicking in any second now for the Donuts, which will give them a talent advantage on top of it. That's why Urel is still at the bottom of the map, because she's trying to close the experience gap. But even that is absolutely futile. 
So now we have level 7, the fort is down, the immortal still has 50% HP. Urel is attempting to get at least get some counter pressure in, but Chris now has to retreat. They don't even push this any further, and why would they? There's nothing to gain here anymore. They are already so far ahead that it's just insane. This is... I'm a bit blown away by this series. <laughs> this is literally what I'm thinking right now. <laughs> I'm just like scrambling for thoughts. I expected this to... I mean, again, it's always possible that you get a 2-0, right? But normally, especially with the names that we have here, I expected the games to be a bit closer than this. Then again, we're jumping obviously ahead of ourselves, right? It's a half-level leading experience. Yes, two forts are down, but you win one fight, you keep it together, and you might have a chance to bring it back. We've seen crazy comebacks in the past. We could see someone here. We don't even have heroic abilities yet. Those usually change the dynamic one way or another, and we'll find out if maybe the hardos have a way to, uh, to take this here. But at least for the early game, it is clear that the Donuts are playing the much better game. They are doing an incredible job right now at controlling this. Stacks for Cassia, on the other hand, way, way better for the Hardos now than they have been previously. Just check this out for a second. We are six minutes into the game and we have 50 stacks on Cassia. That is honestly one of the best things at this point that the Hardos have going for themselves. That they have a chance to stack Cassia into Oblivion towards the late game and then really chunk out the damage. So that's at least an opportunity. Now, of course, it is a small hope that we're talking about here, but it's definitely a realistic one. If Hazu can keep that up, and if they also can close the experience gap eventually, which they're currently trying to do as best they can, and they want to uh, bridge this. The idea has to be to get as close to level 10 as they possibly can by the time that the Donuts reach their heroic abilities, and they're also using the opportunity at the bottom of the map now to take a tower down and open the gate up most likely. Now the rotation of the blue team is now there, but they are staying long enough to take the entire thing. And that was nicely done. But the lead with level 10 is significant for the Donuts. They got it right now, which means that the Hardos can't go for the Immortal. They gotta fall back, and they gotta take it easy. Maybe poke from a distance a bit, but that's all that they can ask for here. And there's the invade! There's the arrow, they get one! Flip attempt, nice play by Anduin. This is exactly why Anduin got drafted. This is the reason, right there. Once the target is in danger, you get it out. They steal the camp away. They can do it because of the level 10s. They know it. So they go for everything that's possible. Now they go for the halftime show. And they're going to try and lock it in. Whew. It's dicey. Yeah, this is an easy one. This is an easy immortal, guys. And we're talking, yeah, 80%. 75, 80%, something like this. Lauba on the other hand, but low, okay. Chen is jumping in, quest completed for Muradin. Bad Benny with another move, gets thrown out right away. The Dwarf jumps in and then he gets Gimli'd out. But there is the focus on Zarya, the level 10 ability. He's finally an opportunity and already the Dragon Blade for Genji. He's moving in again, trying to take Lauba down, but it's not enough. They're switching the focus to Hanzo and Hanzo gets wrecked. Shimada against Shimada, Nick. Ice Cold comes in with his little snowflake and takes the hipster beer down. And Lauber is also dead. That's the comeback right here, at least in kills. But the problem is, while they are farming the blue team, they have completely ignored what's happening uh, around the Immortal. So the Immortal is going to take down the keep. Nah, but it's going to do some serious damage here. And we also had Chen pushing the bot lane a little bit. Stukov, on the other hand, now also dies. And that's three kills in total now for the Hardos. They're definitely coming back on this. The arrow far and wide. Back to an A. The chase against Anduin. Yasu! Zarya's dead, but so is Anduin. Anwen is dead, Murden still fighting it out with the Immortal, the keep is taking some serious damage, bot lane wall has also been destroyed. So as the dust settles in the game, we have a lead in kills for the Hardos, they've closed the gap in experience, but they have suffered significant damage at the keep at the top, and they have lost the wall at the bottom. So structurally speaking, they are way behind. They're in real trouble. But... They closed the experience gap. And that was really important. If you're always fighting against the talent uh, advantage on your opponent's side, you are in for a rough game. But this is giving them at least the option of fighting for the next Immortal. And if they're able to control that properly, there's always an opportunity to maybe decide the game in your favor after all and just slowly but steadily set this up. And that's what they're going to try and do. 
and we are here to watch them try. So, level 13 talents are soon gonna be kicking in. We have 14,000 damage for Hanzo, 23,000 for Cassia. Stacks slow down a bit for Hazu, but he's still sitting at 62. So, decent level 13. The virulent reaction is in. And they're already pushing the top lane a bit, and that's of course something that the red team has to react to. They got to. They gotta move back immediately and say, okay, guys, let's see what we can do here. We need to defend. We can't lose the keep for nothing. 13 versus 13. And the donors are just gonna posture, siege up a little bit, see if they can maybe get a quick one somewhere. There's the light bomb set up with Genji diving in. Zarya gets saved by Garrosh. Good job, Svamkrota on the run up at the top, but the panda is fine, at least for now. Might have to escape here though, and he's trying to get out, and he... <laughs> Plays with the vision, the arrow's in! Yasu, not like this, no! The kill! What a beautiful kill against Anduin. They played with the vision around Chen, everybody was so focused on hunting the panda down, and then they just went for it. Nicely done. Guys, check this kill out. Have a look. There's the arrow, you see it come in, and then it's panda time. They go for Yasu, they get the stun. And he just gets caught between a rock and a hard place. Easy kill against Anduin. And now they can, of course, use that 5 versus 4 to their advantage once again. Pressure on the lane still exists. And it's a halftime show that has already started. Anduin is back to business. They need to catch some of the experience down at the bottom of the map. And they currently do that. But still, still a chance for the Hardos to win a fight. And they need these fights now. It's Genji that's sitting at the top Immortal trying to damage it. Down here, the battle starts. Genji is coming in. Light Bomb is ready. Could go for it. Nice save from Bad Benny, but that also means that the trade is in cooldown. There's already the taunt, and Chris is dead. Chris is dead, but Hanzo. Ah, he's dead too. Hanzo is down. Kill for kill. Lauba also murdered. Nice. Here's Ardos coming back into the game. At least trying. They go for Zarya. Stu go for the save. Ah, he can't make it happen. Zarya is dead as well. And with seven kills to four, the Hardos, they keep their chances to win this series alive. Nice. That didn't really look too good initially, but they persisted. Now we have 80 stacks for Hazorps. Cassia with 80 stacks is chunking out the damage. 40,000. 13,000 more than Hanzo. And they win the objective. And they are getting back. They are getting back into this game. Yeah. Experience pretty much dead even. But it's immortal time. And this is the first one for the red team. So now they have a chance to take a fort down. And start to put a bit of a dent into the armor of the donuts. And uh, take some structures down. We're 12, 13 minutes into the game. Panda's down at the bottom of the map. And topside the pressure is going to hit. Ults are more or less already. Murder is still waiting a little bit until he has his avatar back. But this keep is gone. No chance. Keep is going to fall. How much further can they push this though? Because he is level 16. Yeah, and with 16 we got the flying leap. And also the earth shaker. So, Garrosh. Can Lauba set a kill up? Yeah, he's trying obviously. Moving to the top, Panda's moving in from the side, the arrow connecting, Skog again with a great connect, but they are saving the targets, Benny is in a bit of trouble, but he's able to move out, and they're just focusing their attention on the Immortal now, so the defense is there, 16 to 16 on Talons, we by now have the Glyph of Faith, the old level 20 is in, and then with some new boots as well, on 13, and yeah, we got a game on our hands. First four down, as long as the top keep is still standing, they are fine. And I gotta protect that. And let's not forget, the Hardos are heading kills. And as the game continues, that matters more and more. Death timers are increasing, so that is going to make a huge difference potentially. But alright, down here, another flip and light bomb! But the kill is not there. Lauba gets rooted down again and he's low, but they keep him in play. And he can still tap the fountain and now they can turn it. There's a lot of ults that just got used on both sides, but now it's the blue team that's chasing. And here comes Garrosh with a race car. The, ooh, no, this, that, that was a little bit too much Captain Obvious. Captain Obvious just called Baby and he wants his arrow back. No, they saw this one coming. 
Last ones, they were really sneaky. This one uh, was telegraphed. Now they turn it on Lauber again, and this time he, he still gets out. He still gets out. Nice job by Zarya and Stukov. And boy, are they brawling this one out, aren't they? Chris is low, Chris is low, but he gets away. And again, Genji gets also attacked, and the chase is definitely happening. Both of the teams just blow for blow the entire time here. 99 stacks for Cassia. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And not that many, but yeah, 99, exactly. So, we got 99 stacks for them, and that's some serious damage output. And we are 15 minutes in. 15 minutes. If this game goes longer and he can stack like he does here, whew, we're talking dino level of stacks. So Hazu, he is really bringing the pain. Uh-oh, the panda! And there's the kill. Nice. Great job. Lauber also gets attacked, but the panda, he didn't stand a chance. That kill was perfect, but look at the bot lane. Look at the minimap. That's a problem. That's a potential problem. The catapult is going to tip the scales in favor of the attacking blue waves. And that keep is going to be in trouble. The longer this fight at the top lasts, but with Lauber dying, that changes everything. But it's Hazel that's in trouble, and Hazel goes down with 111 stacks. He goes down. Bottom gets attacked just soon, DM, but there's another wave spawning, so the keep will be safe. We're not, we're not deep enough in the game yet for that to do real work. The kill against Cassia hurts, especially with the panda coming back in another couple of seconds. Ooh, oh no, no, no! Another big one. Another big kill, this time against Urel. And oh boy, 63,000 damage for Cassia. They have it, and yep, here we go. That's the play, everybody, at the bottom of the map for the halftime show, and they take it. Halftime show is taken. Easy peasy. Eight kills to six. Still a lead for the Hardos. But it's about who takes the Immortal when they're attacking. Ural is missing. Five versus four. Poke is there. Hanzo. Hanzo with a big damage. They're going for the kill. They try to stagger death. Muradin, no way. Benny dies. Benny is dead just as Ural is about to come back. And that is painful. That is real painful. This is exactly what you don't want to happen. The Donuts, they want a 2-0 victory. They don't want to waste any more time here. And currently, they are looking like they are unstoppable. The only one that hasn't died yet on uh, the red team, actually in the game, is Nick. <laughs> That's a little bit ironic, <laughs> considering how the first game went. But yeah, Genji has not died yet. He needed healing, but apparently he got it. So now with half a level, missing to level 20, this could be a push for game. Murder is not here, so if they get another kill right now, this is going to be uh, this is going to be the end of it. That keep is 100% going to fall. That's not in question. The question is, can they end the game? Can they get level 20, get a kill, and then end the game? Or do they have to fall back and fight another day? They go for Nick, and he gets saved again. Re-engages with a light bomb. The attack is in. The short distance arrow, but the double kill. Chen and Garrosh are both dead. The ult on Chen got interrupted. The boss is on the core and is going to do damage. Some have to start to defend. And the boss is a monster. It's 64% right now. They're still fighting, isolating Chris, or at least attempting to, and they're right-clicking it. They're right-clicking it, and they're finishing it. Or oh, aren't they? Oh, <laughs> there it is. A 2-0 for the Donuts as they move to the winner bracket final. GG. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.